there are certain situations where there's no winners, just a whole bunch of losers. And that is exactly what this Jesse Lingard and Manchester United situation is. It's going to be an acrimonious departure from Manchester United for Jesse Lingard, a player who's been at the club for over 20 years. But nobody's innocent in this situation. I want to, I want to react to comments from uh, Jesse Lingard's brother on Instagram after Lingard didn't come on against Brentford. And I want to run through and explain exactly why there are no winners because these are the sorts of situations that I do not want to exist at Manchester United past this season. I'm bored of our club being a circus act with all these sorts of sideshows. And I very much hope that this is the last one of them because I'm sure you've seen them. But these are the comments from Jesse Lingard's brother on Instagram last night. 20 years of blood and sweat and tears, four domestic trophies, three cup final goals, not even a farewell. No wonder it's Conference League next year. Attacking players for celebrations when the club's being sold to the Super League. Okay, Class of 92 and Busby Babes, you're ran by people who don't even know the offside trap. Well, that's one part we can agree with. Classless, and the fans need to realise, good night and God bless, ta Been there since nine years of age and didn't even get a send-off. Well done, bro. Your family are proud. Now, as soon as that happened, we've seen reports all coming out today that Jesse Lingard is upset with Ralph Rannick at being denied an Old Trafford farewell appearance against Brentford and that he's dismayed that Rannick sent on Cavani ahead of him. Like, he's absolutely entitled and deserved it. Bear in mind, this is the same brother that in January sent this out on Instagram. A year ago today, we were allowed out on day release. Now we know what Akon felt like. But the same brother that flirted with West Ham whilst he was still a Manchester United player. This is exactly what I mean when I say there are no winners in this situation. And the way it's presented and the fact that Lingard is angry, it's almost like he felt he was he deserved it. Like Ragnick owed it to him. This is the same Ralph Ragnick, by the way, that's been undermined by Jesse Lingard. It's an absolute mess. It's a disaster of a dressing room. I had a quick chat with, chat with Jesse there. I'm sure he won't mind me saying it. The dressing room's just a disaster. It's an in what sense of the word? Does Radnick owe Lingard anything? He doesn't. And clearly the fact that he decided to bring on Cavani ahead of Lingard shows that Radnick has more admiration for Cavani. In the fact, Cavani's hasn't even been there for two months and he's still that. And this is the same Lingard that was involved in that situation. Remember when Radnick said that he, he had asked for time off and then Lingard came out with a self a lot of self-preservation going on here. And this is the exact mentality that is that is dominated United's dressing room, taken over and poisoned the club. The self-sense of importance is overwhelming at Manchester United. Players who think they are far more important than the club and their own self-preservation is so much more important to them than Manchester United being successful. Ralph Radnick doesn't owe Jesse Lingard a damn thing. Just in the same way that Ralph Rannick does not owe any of those players a damn thing after an absolutely abysmal season. Horrendous season. And they want to talk about what they're owed. How about you show up as professionals week in, week out, and you start playing like a Manchester United player should? Maybe then you might get some sort of ounce of sympathy from a United fan when you don't get that farewell, which he deserves. All right? I remember Jesse Lingard and what he's done at the club. I remember those cup final goals. I remember the fact that he was there in the last FA Youth Cup winning team in 2011. I remember all of that. I remember the good times that I've had with Jesse Lingard as a United player. But you only remember for like, if, if, I don't know the best way to describe it, but just the way that Jesse Lingard has been acting in the last 18 months, he almost sounds surprised that there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of United fans who have sort of lost it with him. Because Jesse Lingard, right, last summer, United, I believe, priced him out of a move. I think that was United's fault, asking him for a bit too much. But if Jesse Lingard really wanted that move, he could have easily put in a transfer request. If playing football was the ultimate ambition for him last summer, he would have put in a transfer request. As soon as the Ronaldo situation came in, I guarantee you his mind was changed completely. 
Lingard stayed at the club. Happy to be a bit part player because Ronaldo's back at the club. You can't not be around United when Ronaldo's there. And then you fast forward to January and that situation was odd as well. Manchester United were blocking Jesse Lingard's move, but he didn't want to leave on a permanent transfer. He only wanted to take a loan deal because he wanted to be a free agent this summer so he could get the best possible deal and the signing on bonuses that come with being a free agent on a Bosman. Lingard wanted that ahead of regular first team football. So this whole self sense of entitlement is, is so staggeringly weird from the same brother that came out and said that yesterday and did that only a few months earlier. It's like, come on, man, where's the awareness? Where is the awareness? The relationship between the United fans and not just Jesse Lingard, but so many of our players for their just utter lack of professionalism. And I tell you what is a stark contrast to all of this. One matter and one matters exit for the club. He's walking out with a big smile on his face, a standing ovation from Old Trafford. So was Nemanja Matic. And I'm sure Jesse Lingard might have been if he was given that sort of exit. And that's that, that that's what they're angry with. I think. As I said, in, there's no winner in this situation. And I just want this to be the line in the sand. I want this to be the last time that we're having this sort of bullshit conversation about players who are frustrated at the treatment for the club. Well, these players really cannot, they do not have a leg to stand on. After the seasons upon seasons that they have been putting in in Manchester United shirts, that they have the audacity to then turn around and say, oh, you're not treating me well enough. Are you kidding me, man? Unbelievable, unbelievable sense of self-importance from so many. And Jesse Lingard is not the only example. He is a example, and he is the example we are talking about today. But as I said, the, the polar opposite in terms of the professional approach to being a bit part player. One matter, maybe it's different because he's at a different point in his career. But as I said, if Jesse Lingard really, really cared about playing first team football, really cared that much about the fact that he wasn't going to get an England squad, he would have pushed for a move away. But he's on a massively inflated contract that probably won't be given to him anywhere else. And he's happy. It's it's like having your cake and eating it. So he's happy to be a bit part player until he's not happy to be a bit part player. And then he's really angry a bit. And everybody's really angry about it. As I said, this this reeks of that self sense of heightened importance. Jesse, man, you're just going to be another player that comes and goes at Manchester United just the same way that Beckham was, just the same way that every single United player is and was. You're all just players for the club. The club is far bigger than you. We'll always be, any football club will always be bigger than any player. That's what it should be. That's what it hasn't been at United for a long time. And this, I suppose, this, this hits home, seeing this sort of stuff, seeing these sorts of messages because I'm just, I'm, I'm bored of it. I'm tired of it. And this is the exact same situation. No, not the same situation. But exactly why I'm also done with the Paul Pogba situation. I do not care if he could be a great player under Eric Ten Hag. I really, really do not care. I'm just finished with it. I'm done with it. Uh, Jesse Lingard, oh, he's upset, is he? Oh, is he really upset? Well, how about the fact that United fans are upset with how shit we have been for eight to nine years and the sorts of performances that you put in this season, last season, and every season post-Fergie? If you uphold yourself to the standards of Manchester United, you will have the continued and constant support from United fans. But instead, you flirt with West Ham during the January transfer window. Your brother comes out and says, ah, oh, look, we've been locked up. And all of a sudden, you now have the audacity. No, I'm not saying Jesse, but all of a sudden, his brother now has the audacity to be angry at that treatment. It's just, it's hypocritical on an absolutely, unbel almost unbelievable level. But this is the sort of mentality that has taken over that dressing room, which Jesse Lingard was leaking. Absolute mess. It's a disaster of a dressing room. Don't forget room. this. I had a quick chat with, chat with Jesse there. And I'm sure he won't mind me saying he said, the dressing room's just a disaster. Why would Ralph Ragnick owe Jesse Lingard anything when he's probably been one of the... He has been, as Paul Scholes explained there, one of the players who's been undermining him and making it very difficult for him. Ralph Ragnick owes him nothing. Manchester United owes him something. And I do hope that Jesse Lingard... Do I? I don't know. I don't think I do now. I'm just done with it. 
I'm done with Popper. I'm done with Lingard. The different in the, in the I'm done with Mata and Matic and Jones and Martial. Let's fucking move on, man. Bury it. Come on. Benito. Let's start moving forward. Let's start having, you know, football conversations as a football club instead of this sort of Kim Kardashian, he said, she said bullshit. It's the sort of circus which has sort of enveloped the club for so long and it's just made us a laughing stock, an absolute laughing stock. And as I said, in this situation here with Lingard, nobody is innocent. United have definitely, I think Solskjaer probably gave the false impression that he was going to get minutes. I think that was poor management. Uh, I, think Lingard, I think Lingard was priced out of a move by Manchester United. Last summer, we should have accepted 10 to 15, and I think he would have moved on, and it would have been better for us, smarter for us, but we didn't. Instead, we had an angry, frustrated player on the bench, but he could have moved away in January if he wanted to. He could have moved away last summer if he really pushed for it. Happy to be a bit part player when it suits him. Not happy to be a bit part player when it doesn't suit him. The s get rid of these players who think they are bigger than the club, who feel they are far more important than they are. Until we get rid of them, we're never winning anything. I suppose that's a bit of a rant. That's not really my sort of style, but I'm just, yeah, I, I'm just done with it. I'm, I'm so done with this mentality that these players feel like they're far bigger than they are. And they've all got to go, man. If United are going to win anything, they've all got to go. And we've got to start afresh. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.